This is just simply another textbook version of the Millican Prayer. So, by way of review, or if there's anyone that missed yesterday, or it's another chance to sort of think this through, I think we did a pretty good job yesterday of getting a pretty good understanding of what happened. Here's another version, and then we're going to actually do a little bit of math along with it as well. Okay? Uh, you'll see the diagram there at the top. Uh, so bear with me as I review this again here. One important application of the uniform electric field between two parallel plates was the measurement of the charge of an electron. This was made by the American physicist Robert A. Millikan. Uh, he was alive from 1868 to 1953 in 1909. So over 100 years ago, again, he did this. Figure 21A shows the method used by Millikan to measure the charge carried by a single electron. That was the purpose. Fine oil drops were sprayed with an atomizer into the air. These drops were often charged by friction with the atomizer as they were sprayed. We now know that he actually used what to charge them? Remember? X-ray, right? The ionic there, exactly. Uh, gravity acting on the drops caused them to fall. A few entered the hole in the top plate of the apparatus. A potential difference was placed across the two plates. The resulting electric field between the plates exerted a force on the charged drops. When the top plate was made positive enough, the electric force caused negatively charged drops to rise. The potential difference or voltage between the plates was adjusted to suspend a charged drop between the plates. At this point, the downward force of the weight and the upward force of the electric field were equal in magnitude. So you might remember this diagram from yesterday. It's going to be key in the next little while. All right? Okay. So remember that these are happening in the Earth's gravitational field, and so the weight force, which is equal to m times g, is equal to the electrical force, which is equal to q times z. E. And this one here is coming from E equals F over Q, right? Which can be rearranged to F is equal to QE. So because he can find the mass, and because we know what gravity is, we can find the weight force. The weight force is equal to the electric force. We know what the electric field strength is, so that gives us the ability to solve for Q, the electric charge. The magnitude of the electric field was determined from the potential difference between the plates. I'm reading that second paragraph. A second measurement has to be made to find the way of the drop Mg, which was too tiny to measure by ordinary methods. To make this measurement, a drop was first suspended. Then the electric field was turned off, and the rate of the fall was drop measured. Because of friction with the air molecules, the oil quick drop quickly reached terminal velocity. This velocity was related to the mass of the drop by a complex equation. Using the measured terminal velocity to calculate mg, and knowing the e, the charge he, q could be calculated. Now, there's actually some controversy about Millikan's use of uh, terminal velocity, and he may have used the wrong number there as well. So there's lots of controversy. Do you guys know what the other controversy was about the charge? He threw away the data he didn't, didn't like, and then the sort of the more uh, Drama, social drama. What else did he do? He got this grad student to do a lot of the work and then took all the tests. Got the middle prize. Probably should have shared the prize with him. Yeah. Uh, this velocity was related to the mass drop by a complex equation. Using the measure term velocity to calculate mg, knowing E, the charge Q can be calculated. Relative found that the drops had a large variety of charges. And when he used x rays to ionize the air and add or remove electrons from the drops. He noted, however, that the changes in the charge were always a multiple. So some people say that he, he was actually measuring the changes. I'm not going to worry a whole lot about that. The, they were always a multiple of minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. The changes were caused by one or more electrons being added to or removed from the drops. He concluded that the smallest change in charge that could occur was the amount of charge of one electron. Therefore, Millikan said, each electron always carries the same charge. You should maybe highlight that right at the bottom. Key number minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. Millikan's experiment showed that charge is quantized. This means that an object can only have a charge with a magnitude that is some integral multiple of the charge of the electron. Integral multiple means that it's some whole number like 3 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, or 4, or 5, or 6. The presently accepted, now we're kind of fuzzing a little bit here. The presently accepted theory of matter says that protons are made up of fundamental particles called quarks. The charge on a quark is either plus a third or minus two thirds the charge of the electron. Theory of quarks that agree with other experiments state that quarks can never be isolated. Many experimenters have used an updated metal can apparatus to look for fractional charges on drops or tiny metal spheres. There have been no reproducible discoveries of fractional charges. 
uh, when, of course, the text was admitted. Thus, no isolated court has been discovered. Court theory remains consistent with the premise. So, still in development, you guys, for all intents and purposes, you guys go ahead and believe those. Let's stop there, Mr. Bernard. Oh, go on, Mr. Okay. You can stop now, or I'm done now if you want to. Oh, okay, no, no, I'm not, I'm not that done. I'm sort of mid midway. Your class I appreciate. Okay, I've got I've got their attention. Look at I can see. I don't, I don't want to interrupt. Okay, go away. Come back. Okay. Yeah. Five minutes. Ten. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, I'm not gonna. You're just gonna be thinking about what he's gonna show us. Aren't you? Okay. <laughs> How am I supposed to compete with that? I have a video to show you before I can make it back. Okay, I would like to do this example problem right here, okay? So we've got, and because this is a good, good way for me to sort of go back and have a look at trying to do notation with you as well. So we've got here an oil droplet weight 1.9 times 10 to the minus 14 neutrons. It's suspended in an electric field of intensity 4.0 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb. Does everybody see where we are? On the back page there, where is the example? What is the charge on the oil drop? The upper plate is positive. How many excess electrons does it have? So let's just do this together. Now, their version of the answer is probably a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to just do it my way. What do we know here? We know the weight of the oil droplet. So that, is that is that like m times g already? They're giving you the Fw. 1.9 times 10 to the minus 14. They're giving you the weight force. Okay? I would suggest, yeah, maybe do this on loose leaf, or, or even you could do it maybe in the little bit on the bottom there, in that little white space, right? It's there already, but I would suggest you write it. You're going to get a better understanding by writing. So they give you the weight force, and they give you the electric field intensity, which is 4.0 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb. And the question is, what is the charge on the oil drop? You are solving for Q. Right? Okay. Should we draw the little picture? Weight force, electric force, they are equal to each other. Right? So this value right here, this tells us then that the Fe is 1.9 times 10 to the minus 14. Right? So now I'm just going to plug that into E equals F over Q. What's the value of E? This one here. 4.0 times 10 to the 4. My Fe is 1.9 times 10 to the minus 14 all over Q. And here's where all that ability to solve equations keeps coming back. You've got to be able to do it. you got to know how to do it without even sort of thinking it through. You just know. You're going to swap those two out. So Q is going to be 1.9 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 4.0 times 10 to the 4. Go ahead and try that on your calculator. So you should have gotten, you should have gotten 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19. Did you get that? Is that what you get, 4.75? Yeah. I'll show you why, why right away. Okay. You should get, Jason says, 4.75 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, hopefully you can do that. If you're still having problems with your calculator, you're going to have plenty of time today. I can come around and help you with that. The next question says, if the upper plate is positive, how many excess electrons does it have? Okay? So, in our electric field, the upper plate is positive. So, for this oil droplet to be attracted to it, Right? For there to be an electric force up, the oil drop's going to have to be positive or negative. negative. It's going to have to be negative, right? For it to be attracted to the top, it's going to have to be negative. Right? 
So now it says, how many excess electrons does it have? If it's negative, that's because it has more electrons than protons or less electrons than protons. If it's negative, it's got to have more electrons, right? More electrons than protons. So it's got extra or excess electrons. How many? They're really saying, how many electrons of charge is that? That's what they're really saying, right? 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19. How many electrons is that? Well, what's one electron? 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, right? So two electrons would be two times that. Three electrons would be three times that, four times that. So what do I have to do? I have to take my 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19, and I have to divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And you're going to get 3. Three, and we call this, we have a unit for this, we call it three elches. E L C H, elches. Elches stands for elementary charge. Elementary charges. Elches. So, Jason, if that 4.8 is, is left at 4.75, you're not going to have a perfect three here, right? And because this number, number of elches should always actually be a whole number, right? You can't have less than one electron, right? So it should be, uh, that should be rounded, that should be a, a whole number. Is that always going to be the case? Not always. I'm just going to throw random numbers at the kind of thing right there, but it should really be. So you will always want to round this one down? You probably should, yeah. Well, I would say you should always round this to no decimals, right? Like if you want to leave that as 4.75, then when you do this, you're going to get like 2.98 elches. Oh, yeah. okay, that's three, right? So, would you round it up or would you round it down to get a decimal place? Because if you're at like 2.4, then technically you have to. Yeah, well, I don't. You probably just use regular round. Yeah. Show your work. I'm not. I'm not going to mark that wrong because you made that assumption. I, I'm interested in the work. Okay? Does that sort of make sense, that whole process there? What if what if they hadn't given you the weight force? What if they'd given you the mass? What step do you have to do first? Multiply by 9.8. And then it's exactly the same process. Okay? Now there's a couple of practice problems there uh, on the bottom. How about you guys try those? Try number 9 and 10 right now just as practice. Okay? Then I'll do those with you, and then I'll let you work on your own. Try number 9 and 10 in, uh, in a few minutes. Number 9 says, a drop is falling in a millikan oil drop apparatus when the electric field is off. Okay, so what's the force on it? Just gravity, right? Just gravity. What are the forces on it regardless of acceleration? Just gravity. I guess you could say there could be a little bit of air resistance, right? We don't know for sure. If it is falling at a constant velocity, what can be said about the forces on it? Well, like if it's moving at a constant velocity, then that means that these forces have to be equal, right? Constant velocity means that the net force is zero, which means that F air, the air resistance, must be equal to the FW. Should be an arrow, right? If the net force is zero, that tells us that um, the air resistance must equal the weight force. Okay, well that was not too hard. Number nine. Let's try number ten. What's that? That's all it said. If it's falling at a constant velocity, what can be said about the force on it? They're equal. That's it. You often do. A lot of kids often overthink. Not just Anna. Sorry, that sounded like I was attacking Anna. Lots of kids overthink. And the oil, let's try number 10. An oil drop weighs 1.9 times 10 to the minus 15. It is suspended in an electric field of 6.0 times 10 to the 3. What is the charge on the drop? So once again, they are giving us the weight force. Anna, how much is the weight force? Yeah, but how much? What's the number? No. An oil drop weighs 1.9 times 10 to the minus 15. That is our weight force. 1.9 times 10 to the minus 15. 
the electric field strength, 6.0 times 10 to the 3. And once again, we are asked to find the charge. It's exactly the same as the one I did before, is it not? Right? So this is our Fe. So then you're going to write E equals F over Q. Electric field, 6.0 times 10 to the minus, sorry, not the minus, 6.0 times 10 to the 3. The E value is 1.9 times 10 to the minus 15. Solve for Q. Q is going to be those switch places, 1.9 times 10 to the minus 15, all divided by 6.0 times 10 to the 3. Try it on your calculator. The answer, oh no, the answer is not there. I have to actually do it. One point nine exponent. 15, negative, divide by 6, exponent 3, I get 3.16, let's round that to 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And, hey. You should always get something close to minus 19. Like if you got minus 18, then that means you're going to have a lot of extra electrons, right? So it should always be, yes. It should always be some multiple of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. 1.6, 3 3.2, 4.8, 6.0, 7.6. Right? Okay, so it does say how many extra electrons does it carry? So you're going to take 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by the magic number 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and you should get 2. Sometimes it's written as 2 elches. Sometimes it's written as 2, and then E with a little negative. Electrons. Okay, those, those are equivalent. Those are equal. Is it starting to make some sense? Hopefully. You should have... You should try to find this sheet right here. I gave it to you a couple days ago. I didn't give you a chance to work on it. So there's a few questions there. There's just six, right? I was from like Tuesday, I believe. You know what I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, it was the day before the hockey guys left. That's it. Spend some time on that. That's it. Six questions in. Yeah. Yeah. Spend some time on that. Um, Monday, make sure you're well caffeinated because we're going to do a full blown Millikan uh, problem. Um, it's long and it's hard. Monday. So make sure you're well rested and ready to go. Yeah. Let me turn my recording off.